Praise be to God. We just want to thank you once again for joining us in our study of God's most powerful and potent word. We believe in the word of God. We believe that the word of God has a purpose for our life today. And even more for our life today, because of all the different circumstances we believe that we are brought into in our society throughout this earth. But one of the things that we desire to share with you today is that always remember this, that the Word of God says a man or woman ought to always pray and not faint. And the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ one day, how should we pray? And Jesus Christ gave them a certain model way of praying. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that that is a powerful way that God gave us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know it as the Lord's Prayer. But I want you to know, no matter what circumstances you're in, that this prayer can strengthen you and encourage you. Even if you don't have time sometimes, seemingly because we're always on the run, and we don't seem to have the time to give the Lord the glory as He should be given. Or as the Word says, to be still and to know that He is God. But I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, we need to find time to give unto the Lord each and every day. And I believe the beginning of prayer can begin right here in Matthew the 6th chapter in the ninth verse. And it's the Lord sharing with us how we should pray as he taught his disciples. And he said unto them, pray after this manner, therefore pray you. In other words, in this attitude, in this manner, pray this prayer. And my brothers and sisters, when you pray, remember to be cognizant of what you are actually saying. Don't only see it in, in your head, but see it in your heart. Not only say it in a repetitive way, but say it in a meditative way. That it will resonate in your spirit and in your heart. And I tell you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, this simple prayer can revolutionize and change your life forever. I remember the sister that I interviewed, Sister Immaculate Abelagaza. Now, some of you may not know that name, but she is the, the, the woman today that was caught in the Rwandan genocide back in the days of Clinton's administration. I was truly blessed to have interviewed her. And I remember her telling me and sharing with me how she prayed this prayer over and over and over again. Every day, keeping her mind on God. And the circumstances that she was in, my brothers and sisters, you and I may never ever have to rely upon our faith in God in such a manner. She was, her and eight other women were put in a bathroom by a pastor of a Baptist church. And they were put in her bathroom because there were those who wanted to kill them. They were the, uh, the Tutsis and the Hutus who were battling against one another. And here they were in a bathroom, a small bathroom, very small, maybe eight feet wide and, and, and six feet in depth. And here they were all in this bathroom. And as she was praying that prayer, 
There were soldiers that was gathered all around with machetes, with guns, with sticks to come and kill them. They were trying to find everyone who was not like them and they were going to kill them. And they came into this pastor's house and they looked for them and they could not find them. And when they left out, they waited for a while and they was come back in again and, and the Lord spoke to her heart and, and she uh, reached out and said to the pastor, the pastor, put this uh, dresser in front of the door. And he did so. And she said, through the count of the pastors, that over 200 soldiers passed through that house looking for them, wanting to destroy them and kill them, and yet could not find them. This is God. And she said it came through that simple prayer and trust and believing God. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that this is a powerful prayer. And we want to take a moment today to dissect this prayer, to look within that prayer, to look at the boundaries of this prayer, to look at the heights of this prayer. And what God will say to you and I today for our circumstances that we face. Jesus said, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your Father, you're recognizing that he is your Father. He is intimate with you. And you can consider him and call him Father. And this is what Jesus Christ is saying. Jesus Christ is trying to establish a, a point of view that they can change from what they are or what they believe. Many times they believed and as many times we believe that he is God and that he is. But even greater than that, he is our Father because that makes it more intimate. You know, a lot of people will say to you, or say to I, you know, I'd rather use his name. He's Jehovah. He's Adonai. He's this and he's that. But my brothers and sisters, I rather call him Father because that's more intimate and a, a more intimate relationship that you have with him when you call him Father. And Jesus was trying to establish that with these Jewish believers, that he's no longer just God to you, that gave the Ten Commandments that you were to follow and you were to obey, but now he has become your Father. He is intimate with you, he was saying to the disciples, so that they would understand him in a totally different light than ever before. Because Jesus Christ, remember, Jesus Christ said, he is my father, and they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to kill him because he said that he had come from heaven and that God was his father. That's why they rejected him. Uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, they didn't reject him because he said he was from God, they reject him because he was actually calling God his father, which he is to you and I. He is now our father. Rejoice in that, my brothers and sisters. Rejoice in that thought that he is now your father, not just God, not just someone who is sitting out in the stratosphere somewhere. But no, he is intimate with you. He has come to sup. He has come to abide in you by his Holy Spirit. And now you can call him Father. Even the same terms that Jesus used. Some folk ask me, well, why not call him Jehovah? Why not call him 
Adonai. Why not call him Elohim? That's okay. But he's my father. He's your father. What did God the Father tell Moses when Moses said, you want me to deliver your people, but who will I tell them has sent me? And he said, say to them, I am that I am. My brothers, my sisters, he is I am that I am in your life. He has become your father. Jesus recognized him as his fathers. And now here he was allowing the disciples also to call him father. What a blessing to know that I have a father in heaven that cares about me, that is concerned about me, and that loves me. My brothers, my sisters today, call him your father. Make it your business that when you wake up in the morning, say, Father, how are you today? Praise be to God. Father, I acknowledge you, for you are God. You are the answer to my day. You will order my steps because you are my Father. Praise be to the living God. As we go further into this prayer, I pray that God will bless you, the Father will keep you, and the Father will cause you to prosper even as your soul prosper and you will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord but that you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you.